if cash is king, then beryllium's job is basically protecting royalty. This is a big part of this major security company's mandate. It's expensive, delicate, and dangerous work. Beryllium President Andre McLean joins us now. Hi, Andre. Greetings. Greetings, Kalela. So this interview has been months in the making. You were originally booked probably around February or March, and then we had that attack on well one of many attacks but that was the that was a fatal attack actually on the company it's it's been a really tough year for you uh, beryllium's been in the news and not for the best reasons how have you guys been you know coping with this as a company well i must shout out the the team that we have around us because they're really highly resilient when we got the first attack in february it really came at a surprise and uh, you know we took some time to manage that earthquake but then as we got more um off a with the risk levels and we put a lot of things in place with a lot of support from the public the police and uh, you know good well wishes as well you know we've been able to withstand a lot of the pressure um we have been less than perfect but i i see that we're getting a lot better in the space though you know it, it almost feels like you've become like target number one for the criminals and well it's kind of obvious you, you transport large amounts of cash so there's a reason they would want to but there have been criticisms that you've become an easy target for example the whole issue with the armored vehicles you used to be known for the brinks trucks uh, that's no longer the case to some extent so so explain to us uh what's going on there with the security level of the company okay so you know in Historically, we've really taken a lot of economic decisions um, versus sometimes taking a lot more risk. And it is not that the vehicles are not armored, it's just that they're not the, what you're used to, the big burly trucks, but the smaller, more lighter ones were used, one to manage cost, manage efficiency, but they are armored as well, sometimes even more armored than you think, um, in spite of what is said out there in the public space. But from a security level, we've done quite a bit of work since the threat levels have increased tremendously. And where we stand today is we have, we've been afforded a lot more information and support. So, you know, that's why I have to give the shout out to even the, the police. They get a lot of flack for, you know, just general response to crime. But what they don't get credit for is a lot of the things that we prevented. So there's quite a few, quite a number of potential attacks that have been foiled. There are quite a number of attempted robberies that haven't made the, the airwaves, which is why we kind of reach out to the persons who say, this is very serious times. You know, Jamaica is moving in the wrong direction around these areas. And it's even heightened more with the prevalence of social media that kind of makes it you know, more in our face. Yeah. So to what extent are these other vehicles armored, the vans that we're seeing around? Because it, it doesn't inspire confidence. We're used to seeing the big, heavy trucks. I, I know. I agree. And some of those are still in the fleet, of course. Right. But, you know, we had to move in a direction that that made us one economically viable as well. So armoring, I've just enlighten the public here. Armoring is not based on how burly the vehicle looks. It's actually the, the material that is made for the armoring. And in this day and age, using the different tiers, level, level one, two, three, four, five level armoring because of the different Kevlars, you're able to armor anything. Your own personal vehicle can get armored and give you the adequate protection. But what I will say though, is that it doesn't give that overwhelming feeling to cause even a greater deterrence. And that is something that has to be managed as well for us because we would prefer not to be seen as a soft target. Therefore, we will have less likely attempts. But at the same time, we are balancing the economics versus the risk as well. Right, because I feel like that is one of the reasons you've been targeted. They see you as a sitting duck. It appears that you're more vulnerable. Not necessarily. Um, you know, for the last 40 years, we've been able to build up a portfolio of support to the financial institutions. And everybody benefited from good economies of scale. I don't like to use the word monopoly, right? 
But good economies of scale meant that the job that we do can spread across multiple institutions, keeping the cost down to the institutions and by extension to now the public at hand, right? We don't want any more bank fees um, to be levied against the public because that has a whole different level um, of, of issue. However, one thing with, with that we've been able to do is with good information and good support, we have lots of shadow teams behind the scenes. We have lots of vehicles and investigations going on. The information that we do get, we're able to respond fast. So that type of action is far more prevalent right now for us. So uh, the next question comes from one of our viewers, Dravi, who says, beryllium guards are not very tactical when you see them out in the streets, which makes them very vulnerable to attacks. Are, they ad are your guards adequately trained and armed? All right, training. Is there much more that we can do? Of course. Is there more diligence that we can have on the road? Yes. You know, our team is less than perfect. And unfortunately, we have to have the constant reminders because the best training doesn't necessarily equal the best outcome from persons. Sometimes we get, we do get complacent. And, uh, you know, one thing I would say that if we have individuals in our team currently who need reminders now of the risk because we talk about it every day we remind we remind the team every day and there are some persons of course who may may not show the type of training that we have given and that is where the cycle of either retraining or repurposing or changing has to happen constantly so yes but one thing though is for sure is even with the level of training the level of equipment the level of armoring for vehicles what we face now, we've never faced before. And you mentioned weapons. Okay. So, yes, it sounds very good to say to the public, but give them more machine guns and fight fire with fire. But there's a very delicate balance between being a deterrent, defending yourself, and potentially causing a lot of collateral damage. Because once we release that fire, where it goes, we have no more control over it. And we still have to balance the public risk as well in our, in our endeavors. So getting bigger guns, yes, there's training around it. But at the same time, there's a delicate balance in our country that are we now basically waging war against the criminals? Because what they've shown is that they are highly armored. So the entire revisiting of how this industry is, is, is looked at has to happen at all levels. There's a lot of conspiracy theories out there about what's been going on and why. Do you believe there's been some collaboration between some of your own staff and the criminals? Okay, so we have no evidence of that so far, but let me be very clear to the public that the investigation is very wide. We are leaving no stone unturned. However, there is a there's a small dynamic in our industry, which is unlike any other country that we operate in this hemisphere, is that we are highly predictable. Now, everybody knows, based on our frequency, that cash is very prevalent in Jamaica. The cash pressure is extremely high. Therefore, there is no doubt in my mind that when an ATM gets filled tomorrow, by the next day, it is empty. So what happens next? You can automatically know we are coming. And what is very clear is that the criminals that have been interviewed, have been told to use that word, they have made it very clear. They've been watching the space now for years. They watch our every move. They know when, they know how, they know what time, they know what date. And therefore, and because it's so highly predictable, we basically go everywhere every day. Therefore, if this is their jobs, and these criminals, this is their job, don't get it twisted. These guys are not here just seeing us by the wayside and then happening to try something. For all the others that you have not seen, they, have, they are well organized. So therefore, getting information and scoping out what is happening in the marketplace is, it is too easy. But again, it's because of the prevalence of cash in our country. I have a lot of people asking about dye packs. So let me just ask yeah. the question. Richard says, is there an alternative means of deterrence being considered? Example, the dye packs, I guess, to trace the money. Right. All right. So dye packs are very good in environments where cash is less. 
So I may give too much information, um, but because of the sheer size of our carriage, therefore we move basically money in bricks. And in bricks, they're all sealed. So therefore, if they're sealed and the cash doesn't get exposed to the die, then what sealed, you really sealed want... Meaning, sealed meaning in plastic? Yes, correct. Sealed in plastic. So they have not a moving, big bunch of cash wrapped we're not up in moving, plastic. Yeah, we're not moving, we're not moving small amounts of, of notes that you can handle. What we're moving is, is, is bricks of cash. So there's straps of 100 and straps of 1,000, and they're all nicely packaged in, in plastic. And because, again, you're moving so much, they really stay in that way. But die packs are useful in certain, in certain instances, and there, there are measures that are, that are in place currently. Um, I may not share too much because, again, telling the criminals on the other side what we are doing is counterproductive, right? right. But I'll add to it for die packs. But there's other GPS technology as well. So we are tracking as well. So in terms of moving a big bag, moving a shipment, not just the vehicles, but also the packages. So what we expect going forward is that next time something like that happens, we'll be able to find them before they move very far. Because, of course, it takes only 30 seconds to commit one of these crimes. And therefore, the response required now means you need to chase them. So we have the means now to chase them. Let's see how they respond to that one. So again, we have to stay ahead of the game simply because... Um, these guys have made it very clear, and I'm, I, I don't want to warn the public, but I really should, that this is the new normal. The attempts that they will constantly make, the ones that you don't see, are constant. The demand for cash in that criminal world is very, very high because it is untraceable, and they have a high need and demand for it. So I, I tell everyone, I tell all the public, be aware um, give our teams a space to operate because the risks are real. You mentioned that you have the means now to chase them. Is it that you didn't have that capability before? Not really, not really. Um, so one of the things with kind of tracking devices is whether or not it is applicable in your use case. So while you're tracking your vehicles or you're tracking, you know, reasonable tracking devices like Bluetooth type tracking devices only take your bite to the distance that you can travel. But tracking now that has GPS technology, small enough that can be hidden and not removed very quickly and give us the opportunity to catch the criminals while they're in the act. These things are reasonably in place. Much more to be done, I must say. You also mentioned that there have been many attempts that the public isn't aware of. Like we become aware of it when shootouts happen and their fatalities right. and all of that. So did these attempts precede February, just that we didn't know about it in the public? People no, always no. been targeting it, 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 it. Well, this is not the first incident. Two years ago, we had a similar incident. However, what we've seen in the last year and based on the information that we do have, there's a lot more happening. The, the, the risks are so elevated. So, so we are finding people in parking lots waiting on us. There are people who are trailing us. There are people who are trying to um, do other um, things, I will say, that we are, suff I want to say sufficiently, but we have been able to ward off a lot of it. But you're as good as the information that you do have. Um, you don't know everyone. You don't know everyone's... Um, you know, attitude towards the situation. But again, yes, if I say that to the public, I'm not trying to scare you, but that is the reality. When you see persons trailing our vehicles, you see multiple persons are standing by, idling, scoping out. These guys are not there just because, um, you know, they, they, they feel by idling for the day, but no. So lots of vehicles have been apprehended license plates have been run. Again, we get lots of support from the police. Um, and I'm saying this more now. And, you know, technically, I'd prefer to keep as much information as we have that we can stay ahead of the criminals. But what I've found so far is that, you know, we struggle with the fact that collateral damage and innocent persons can get affected by the situation yeah. in any way, shape or form that we can help. We need to warn the public. 
to the extent that now when people see beryllium trucks, they run out of way. They're like, I don't want to be around just in case something happens. Something happens. But I wonder, are you having any challenges recruiting employees now, given the high risk nature of the job that's become much more obvious? Well, let's put it this way. You know, during the heights of the attacks, we did lose quite a good number of persons. Again, yes, we strap on a bulletproof vest, we put a gun around our waist, and we put a shotgun in our hands, and we jump in an armored vehicle, we take millions of dollars around. We've always known the risk. However, when the risk is now at your front door and you've lost a loved one, you start rethinking whether or not this is worth it because... Yes, the risk was theoretical, but now it is real. So yes, we did lose lots of persons. And then the security industry itself went through its whole upheaval during, during April, May, June. And we had to have lots of counseling, coaching, retraining. But what we found now is that as persons have become more resilient and the training has been more consistent and we have a good pool of persons, we have great people who have even who are volunteering to join us. And we've also kind of tried to make it reasonably lucrative for the people. We've done everything to make sure that, you know, we want to get to a stable position and we attract the right talent for this business because not everybody is cut out for this business. Mm, not everybody at all. And I wonder too, because we've been talking about transporting cash and how dangerous it is, but it's also very expensive. Like, mm -hmm. How much does it cost to, to hire an armored truck with armed guards to move cash? If, if I, okay, if I give you the annual cost for just one vehicle, I give you an example. One vehicle right now, an armored vehicle costs $250,000. That's just one. And then the salaries around it and the insurances and the training and the guns and then the constant, the vehicle and the fuel. So just one alone can run you. It's very expensive. And hence why, it being so expensive, why... How much is very expensive, though? Give me a range. Uh, it, it depends. It depends. Because, you know, it, it varies from team to team, crew to crew. But I'll give you what has made it more expensive now, is that before when we had four-man crews that were nice and robust, and we, we find more nimbler crews of three people who, who can handle the work. But then now you have four, then we have a trail car, then we have a follow car and these things have to follow and then we use two teams at the same time to do the work of what one team used to do it has become to keep our people safe and the country safe and keep it going we've had to double our efforts i know you want a figure but <laughs> it's quite expensive so and when you said double your efforts you mean double the cost too it's become double more expensive because of these security concerns to do what you used to do last year and previously. Well, and just bear in mind that there was a, 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 with the change, of course, in the security officers were now thankfully made employees and we have that stable environment going on. And then on top of that, there was a minimum wage increase to the industry as well. So right. that alone also, you know. And the change up. from contract workers to employees. Correct, correct. So those things, have also contributed to where the cost is, not even to mention what the security component is. All right, is. well, if you can give me a dollar figure, give me a percentage, like how much has your cost of doing business increased since uh, February? For the cash-related um, transactions, 120%. Right, percent. Yeah, 120%. Wow, more than double. Yes. So I made a video a few months ago I think shortly after that happened, that pretty soon, because of these security issues, it's going to be extremely difficult for people to get cash and we'll be forced into going cashless. Now, a lot of people were mad at me for saying that. I got a lot of negative comments, but we've been seeing this exact situation playing out and the ability to access cash is just like it's getting worse and worse. So I want to show you this video from Talon Zeparte on TikTok.
I hate ATM machines, but tonight me hate them even more. I oh, started when I got some money that I need to deposit in my account. Well, normally, I don't use ATM, but tonight was an emergency. Only to find out that two of the ATM machines were going to never did that work. Think to myself, but wait, isn't it a pay week? How oh, the machine them for now work at a time like this? Little did I know that things was about to get worse. After running out to another ATM, join the long line. Be sure the front owner if you see a sign say I can't deposit new ones. Blow, Quickly rush to see if I could have find the nearest ATM. And I reach wrong ATM. After going to a dozen ATM, I realized that none of them did attend the news. Started going from store to store, from shop to shop. I resorted to begging old money for me, asking as much people as I could. But I can see the joys from my face. After what seemed like an hour, eventually I got all the money. Jump in my car and quickly drive to the nearest ATM to handle my money. Only if you see the whole of Jamaica pile up at the front of the ATM. Just know it was another hour before me end up leaving right this one. Never again in my life will I ever make this happen to me. And that is the reason why for the life of me, so I've been seeing a lot of videos like that. And la that was posted last week, which was pay week. Now, Andre, a lot of people blame you, blame Beryllium for this issue with the ATM. They say you've been reducing service and not restocking them in a timely manner. I mean, we have some part to play in it. Um, but there is such a multivariant issue around ATMs in the country, right? If I tell you about the volume of transactions that are happening at ATMs now, they are equating, if not surpassed, last year, December. Now, December is normally a double in, doubling in terms of volumes that you're able to manage. So if we're seeing that already, even despite of, in spite of the challenges that persons are saying, I can't access cash, the cash that is in circulation going through these same ATMs is double what it was before. But then there are other factors to play, right? So we did launch the new notes into the, into the public, and though everybody had time to reasonable time to prepare themselves once you get out there in the space there are a lot of machines that would not be able to manage it's like i use the example of saying you know you have a well-run toyota corolla that is working and then you start putting jet fuel in it and that's what these polymer notes are so it requires that much more that much more efficiency that much more fine tuning and a lot more errors and faults are happening in the space a lot of time persons see atms that are not working but the overwhelming number of faults that the, we are faced with, the banks are faced with to kind of handle. Now, there's a whole different arm now is trying to manage both faults and cash. But yes, the cash penetration. There's one thing I'd like to highlight, though, right? Um, and this was, this has always been a very difficult decision as we deliver it. We know of certain risks. We know that going to a certain location right now is problematic. And we then, this, we then say to ourselves, should we go? Now, if we don't go, the economic impact is huge. Persons need pays, a payroll recon. But then we know sometimes what the risk is. What is that decision? And we have taken quite a number of risks knowing and being able to avert them. But at the same time, what next, right? So speaking about cashless, no. But we do need less cash in the country by far and as things evolve there are multiple reasons that makes the atm pressure and adapting to the new environment even that much more difficult for all of us all of the parties that play a part in managing the atm process does inflation have something to do with it that people are just withdrawing more cash from the atm because things are more expensive than they used to be yes so so we did so when we look at the data last year cash moved let's say around the same rate as inflation. That's what we saw three years running. COVID was a different, and, and, and by the way, Jamaica has no comparison to any other country where all countries kind of move towards more digital channels of transactions, whereby Jamaica went the opposite direction in terms of having more cash. Um, but yes, the increase did move along the lines of inflation, but what we're seeing now is that no, it's even surpassing inflation. So it says that there's a lot more transactions and activity happening in the country. Now, is it more prosperity? Is it just inflation? Is it just a lack of trust in the country around the digital channels? But even digital channels have seen an increase in volume. So a lot of activity is happening. And are we able to catch up fast enough? And we meaning we, the financial institutions and all the supporting team members, are we able to catch up fast enough to meet this demand? 
all efforts, no efforts are being spared. I remember speaking to you before this interview and you're telling me how the average transaction amount at the ATM used to be $11,000 and now it's gone up to what? You know, the average that I've seen so far is, is hovering over 25,000, right? And because remember, now we used to have a limit on our ATMs. You could only withdraw, let's say 15,000. And if it was at your institution, you're at, you're at maybe 25,000. But now you can withdraw 50,000. Now you can withdraw 100,000. And what we have seen is ATMs get replenished with a good amount of money. And within six hours, it is all gone. And when you look at the, the level of transactions, we're not talking about. And then, you know, we, I wonder as well that the risks that persons are taking, having this amount of cash being withdrawn at an ATM on themselves personally. Again, they're taking these risks. Why? There's a lot of different things that are playing playing its part in why the cash pressure is so high so do you need to restock more frequently and are the banks willing to pay for that especially since your cost has gone up already no so so there are a lot of different things in terms of handling the restocking so it's not just restocking but having higher volumes on the atms so if an atm had five million dollars based on the transaction history an atm can now have 10 million 20 million and based on the new notes that are in place now, so ATMs would probably only have like $500 notes and, and they would only have maybe $1,000 notes. What we're seeing now is that there are a lot now that are giving $5,000 notes. And with the introduction of the $2,000 notes, it makes now the capacity of the ATM much a higher value, but, but, but stick up in right there. A lot of ATMs are being vandalized as well. And the banks mm. are losing from ATMs being stolen. Just today, they had a couple. So... You, you run the risk now of putting $50 million in an ATM that will now last the public, but then tomorrow morning somebody rips it out of the, rips it out of the wall. Wow. So, so what do you then do? Do you just simply keep it at $5 million and then go twice a day, three times a day? Or do you put the $25 million and then wonder if overnight you're going to lose $20 million? So this delicate balance between the risks and what is best for the customers is what all banks are looking at. And of course, all of them have basically increased their ATM values. So is the solution moving more towards cashless then? Inga says, why don't Jamaica move towards using uh, debit or credit cards? I think that will solve the problem. Well, well, put it this way, right? There's a lot that needs to happen in the space around cash. And we will never be cashless. I, I, I really want the public to know that this terminology of cashless society is not real. We do need less cash. But something to point out is that everybody using ATM has a Visa or MasterCard. So therefore, and point-of-sale systems True. are prevalent in the country. So you then ask yourself the question, but if point-of-sale systems are so prevalent in the country, then why is it that the same persons who can go to the point-of-sale need so much cash? It's because everybody because, doesn't accept cash. And that is the point there. Because even persons, even certain offices that you go to they they're, they're not even willing to accept your health card so i won't throw certain in certain professions under the bus but the reality is you know there's still a minimum minimum transaction that persons are going to accept at point of sale where they say but if it's less than 1000 or 500 i'm not willing to pay however so persons even them the retailers are managing the fees because the fees are now prohibitive from making all transactions point of sale so the whole ecosystem of the transaction handling where retailers themselves want cash, they know it is risky, but they don't want to pay that 4 or 3% on every transaction because the margins are so thin. So how do we solve this overall problem? <laughs> A lot of people saying that the point of sale machine is never working, is always <laughs> down. Sometimes I wonder if it's intentionally not working. Just you, mean they don't by, wanna, you, mean, you mean by the retailer, right? By, by the retailer, yeah, just because right. they don't want to accept it. They I don't want to pay the 4% or the 3%, right? Um, mm -hmm. Because, you know, 4% in anybody's business model is high. No, there are different prices. I'm just throwing a number out there, but I know it's up to 4% that the retailers pay. Some may pay one or two because Visa has to get paid and MasterCard has to get paid. So how, how do we manage that? Boys, a lot of issues, you know, you think of Beryllium as a security company, but in talking to you, I realized, you know, the implications for the entire economy 
based on just what you do and the service that you provide. Now, a year ago, two years ago, I don't even remember when it was, you rebranded from Guardsman to Beryllium and Guardsman, very well-known name, household name in Jamaica. Why did you make that change? Okay, so a couple of things, right? So we are the premier currency management company and we are technically one of the first major business process outsourcing companies. So BPOs are getting a lot of credit now in, the, um, in Jamaica, but we were a significant one. So, but we also want to play in a different space. So with a lot of technology and a lot of know-how and skill, we also do lots of other business process outsourcing. And we want to be international. So while the name Guardsman was synonymous with security, selling to the world that Guardsman is your outsourcing partner for all your HR services or all your accounting services, needed some sort of a change. And the change was then Beryllium. Um, and those strategies and plans worked very well. Um, all of that implementation was going good until the faithful day of February. And then we had to retool ourselves. Deco, this, this viewer says, Brother, your job's stressful. Um, <laughs> what about you? you know, you know what, I, I, I'll tell you what, what caused me probably the, the biggest stress over the last year. And it is looking at my fellow colleagues who strap on a bulletproof vest and say to them, Yes, we know there are guns, we know there are issues out there. Okay, let's go to work now. Right? And that's not our demeanor. We really value our team members and knowing the type of risks, talking to them, even after a shooting, after a killing, to have that type of staff meeting and to be resilient and get back out there to convince them. We have a lot of goodwill, you know, as a leadership team and the people believe in us and believe that we, we are going to do what we say to protect them and safeguard them. Because at the end of the day, everybody just simply wants to just earn their bread simply. We want to be facing gunfire and the ridicule of the public, which has been another challenge where TikTok became, we became TikTok famous, not for good things. You know, Jamaica took our situation and we said we laugh at everything, but these were lives, these were individuals who have to go home to their families and wander and serve the public constantly. So that type of ridicule was not very welcome. You know, going back to the, the transition between Guardsmen and Beryllium and also all the security challenges that you've been facing this year, I have to ask, and the new business lines that you've added as well in that context, I have to ask, is it that you would eventually like to move away from the cash transport business to something that's just less stressful and less problem? No, man, no, man. We, not everybody is fit for this business and some of us are, are built for the stress. However, we would like it to be safe and we'd like to diversify because, you know, as much as Jamaica is not moving in that direction of, go, of less cash in the society. Remember, I, wanted, I want the phrase to be out there. It's not cashless. It's less cash that we have to adjust as well. And we've adjusted in the other realms, but we will stand by supporting the financial institutions in a big way because it's not going away anytime soon. For the next 10 years, we'll be, we'll be having this conversation. A lot of people are asking about plans for the future for Beryllium, including whether you would ever do an IPO. Well, the, the short answer is yes. Mm. Because, because there are a couple of benefits from going to the IPO. And it's not just you know, acquiring more capital to expand, to support, to, to, to broaden our horizons, but what going IPO does as well is ensure that your governance is good. It makes sure that your accounting systems are good and solid. And you want to be ISO certified. And we, as the Guardsman Group, we operate in nine different countries doing the same cash management service. And we are highly regarded in, in right across from Bermuda right down to Trinidad. And we do a very good job. But again, to expand on the high demand then yes, capital is required. And of course, giving people an opportunity to participate and having even strong governance is the right direction to make. Okay. So look out for the announcements very soon. Really? How soon is very soon? Not very soon. It takes at least about two years to be ready. But oh. we are on that path. Okay, very, very interesting. So like I said, a lot of people are interested in this topic. Uh, Levar wants to know, 
about the technology you've invested in since the last time on the show. How is the technology being used to safeguard beryllium and its assets? Yeah, I'd mentioned earlier, and again, I don't want to give away too much of the secrets that we're putting out there. But yes, use of technology is very important in managing our teams, having great communication, having the type of um, infrastructure that is required. And not just our technology, but even the investments in the public space, use of cameras, use of monitoring tools, using artificial intelligence. Those things are currently underway, um, implemented as well. But again, we can never have too much technology. But again, once we make, once we make it very useful to us, then it's the right direction. I'm going to take this as probably the last question. It comes from Sean, who says, funny solution, but could you guys pick up the ATMs and refill it at your warehouse, then drop it off? No, that's not a funny That's actually a very good, very good solution, right? So, but we won't pick up the ATMs that we do transport value as well. So what's coming out there in the public space um, with, the right, with the right collaboration is mobile ATMs. Mobile cash handling because, and there are a couple of benefits by using mobile ATMs. I mean, our ATMs that are now situated in an armored truck that you can now, because then we're able to go to certain communities, we're able to go to um, certain areas that are maybe underserved in terms of cash, and you can rotate. Now, you don't need a full time infrastructure, but um, we'll be there on Tuesday. So, it is a solution. Um, pop up banks as well is something that happens where you we drive our armored truck with the requisite um, support from the bank and you handle your transactions um, because, and then the, the third thing it really helps on is business continuity and disaster preparedness because, you know, in this environment, one thing is for sure is that if a hurricane happens, the demand for cash is going to be instant. How do you get cash out there to the public, to the people, is, is something that is very necessary in our environment. What about so helicopter? it wasn't a stupid question. What about helicopter? Uh, well, okay, so we do a, Is that know, too expensive? A, it depends, right? And that is why when I say economies of scale benefits everybody because, you know, picture how cash is moved. It is moved from the Bank of Jamaica to us, to the institutions, to all different walks of, 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 of Jamaica. And, you know, large amounts of cash need to get to Montego Bay. Um, is it safe? Is it more reasonable to get a quick trip across... The island say it may not be a helicopter, it may be a jet, right? And these things happen. That's how we manage in the Eastern Caribbean, that the central bank is in St. Vincent. No. Central bank is not in all the Eastern Caribbean countries, and, but they need to get cash across the different islands. And we basically fly them across. Right. Mm -hmm. So it is a possibility based on Jamaica's demand. But again, now what we're going to we now start saying that the cost of execution becomes what? And who to pay for right. it? Right. And who will pay for it? That's the question. What role do you think the government ought to be playing or should play in all of this? No, okay. I, I have to give lots of the first incident, second incident. Maybe they didn't take us seriously enough. Um, they thought this was a private, I would say, a private entity providing a service. But once we explained the magnitude of our operations and the impact it can have financially and just socially on the environment, and then, of course, the risks that now information started coming, they've given us lots of support from the police as well, right? Now, in terms of government mandates, you know, are we able to reduce transaction fees? We've gone Visa and MasterCard. They need to get paid. Have we... Have we been able to reduce the, trend, the cost of lots of stuff? Not really. So how does the government participate? This is the ongoing conversation that the Bank of Jamaica, the financial institutions, how do we redirect persons towards more digital channels, right? That's a significant component of it as well. Mm. Well, you've certainly given us a lot to think about this evening, Andre. Thank you so much for joining us. Not a problem, and sorry it took so long to, to, to be here. We understand you're under pressure. I it's know, not I an know. easy job. Somebody, well, but somebody said that you're easy on the eyes and that you're younger than, you, than they expected. No, 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 the stress keeps me young. So, really, I, I, I encourage everyone to keep a healthy lifestyle and you know, stay fit because the stress is real. And I saw myself deteriorating back in April. 
just under the, the weight of the pressure of managing and leading you know, hundreds of people and just maintaining that healthy lifestyle and balance is what kind of got me back on my feet. And if I am not strong, I, 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 want, I have to show that strength for my people, right? I have to. And we have very good people who inspire me every single day. So I'm reaching out and appreciating them on this forum as well. How long have you been at Beryllium? Got people say you look young, very young. <laughs> well, okay. So quick history is that, you know, I have been with the Geisman Group for 17 years. Um, if I say I am 43 going on 44, nobody believes me, but that's okay. And I've served in the capacity of group director of operations, group financial controller. I've been in charge of all our companies outside of Jamaica for many, many years. This cash management business is nothing new to me. I, I was part of this same company 10 years ago. And then, of course, you know, as we, in true Gazman fashion, we like to promote and encourage other people to take their, their rank. So I've been a group director for a very long time. But this need um, for me to come back into this position to bring us back to a level of stability was absolutely necessary. And as soon as we are stable, I may be able to go back to taking the Guardsman Group to the international forums that we are now being recognized for, but we've taken a significant pause. So yes, I'm not 25. Somebody said they thought you were 35 or under. Uh, All right, Isis I'll take it. Looking, Thank you, I appreciate it. Looking, looking 30. <laughs> I appreciate it. Good stuff. All right. Thank you once again, Andre. We really appreciate you making the time to join us this evening. And all the best. You know, try, Thank you. Thank you. Try take and it easy, although it's not... Well, you know, the, the public has been helping us. Me. So the public yeah. has been helping us. We are getting lots of calls about, hey, don't go to this place. We see some people. And I'll tell you, five times out of ten, it proves to be very good information. So keep it coming. <laughs>